Reverse Optic Capture Victoric IOL Part 3 of 3. Uh, this really demonstrates how the femtosecond laser really changed the management of this case. Oh, I'm Steve Dewey. I'm still in Colorado Springs Eye Clinic, still in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Twice now we've gotten this IOL to look this good positioned within the confines of the capsule ba capsular bag and aligned with the toric alignment marks on the cornea. And this is, of course, the second time, and the eye trace calculations tell me that if I rotate the lens 44 degrees, I'm going to correct 5.24 diopters of cylinder. So we take this toric alignment planning map created by the eye trace, we rotate it so the temporal aspect is appropriate, tape it to the microscope, and get going. So here we've already put viscoelastic into the anterior chamber. We've reopened the side port incisions both uh, towards the... 730 position as you see there and towards the 130 position as you see up here. I normally rotate the lens using only BSS on a 5cc syringe and the purpose there is to not uh, put viscoelastic into the anterior segment because we want to improve the adhesion of the lens to the capsule and we don't want to cause a pressure spike. Um, but in this case we, we had slightly different plans. Now the lens, uh, very little adhesion easily rotated into position, almost no regenerated material at this point. And so we've got really good alignment here. And most of the time, I would say we're done if that was a primary rotation, but this is a secondary. This is the second time we're doing this. So I've got a different plan, reverse optic capture. We're gonna displace the nasal capsule off the edge of the optic, slide the optic a little bit temporally, and then we're going to go in and create a brand new side port incision. So the original plan had been to use a CTR, and I got to thinking about the technological challenge or the technical challenges involved in placing a CTR in an eye that we're basically hoping the capsule has contracted considerably. And now I'm going to take a Lester hook and I'm basically going to depress the temporal optic push it nasally, uh, and again, we're going to get the optic to override the nasal aspect of the capsule. And once I feel pretty comfortable that I've achieved that, I'm going to hook the edge of the temporal edge of the optic, lift it up, raise it over the edge of the capsule, and it centers actually exceptionally well. And, and I, I really attributed this to the uh, wonderful circularity, the wonderful centration, and the intact nature of the capsulotomy created uh, by the catalyst femtosecond laser. So what we have here is a, a perfect situation for, for the reverse optic capture. Now, if I had a manual capsulorexis that was, say, slightly oval, not particularly centered properly, I would then worry about whether I would, A, achieve the optical alignment I was hoping to with the toric lens, or, or B, um, center the lens enough, even if I could get it aligned, that I wouldn't induce a significant amount of coma by having a decentered optic. So in this case, we're going to irrigate the viscoelastic out from the posterior capsule, making sure that we really don't end up with a capsular distension syndrome afterwards. We don't want to leave any viscoelastic in the anterior chamber either. Um, and we're really trying, I'm trying at this point, to center the lens so that again, the toric alignment marks are perfectly aligned with the corneal uh, alignment marks created by the catalyst, but also that we've got really good, even capture of the optic. So we want about the same amount of capsule under the optic on both sides, and we don't want to induce a tilt situation in the eye. Now, the square-edged optic is anterior to the capsule, so there is always the potential for chafing of the posterior surface of the iris, but in this case, we've got a very deep eye, and we, we should have no problem clearing that space and not having chafing. So here we can see we've achieved a really good alignment, and now the only problem is getting the rest of the viscoelastic out. So I'm, I'm pretty thorough at, at irrigating, and so we spent quite a bit of time just irrigating out the viscoelastic, making sure that we were happy with all the steps. Now, I really have a, a nice little trick. I put air inside the anterior chamber to see how much viscoelastic is left, and the air conforms to the viscoelastic, and so when you see a regular outline, that tends to mean there's only BSS left, but the irregular outline you saw early on meant there was still viscoelastic in the anterior chamber. So my technician hands me the alignment marker, and I'm like, I don't have any external marks. I just have the corneal marks, but what the heck? It's a nice square capsular, 
capsulotomy at this point, wrapping around that optic with the reverse optic capture. She had a wonderful outcome. She's a minus 275 plus 75 at 70, which is perfectly J1 at near, which is exactly what she wanted out of this eye. But it took two tries to get there. Thanks for your time. I hope you enjoy this case of reverse optic capture.